And so we do know that this is a JAK2 driven disease. What is the, um, you want to talk about uh, the relevance of JAK2 to controlling disease when cyto other cytoreductive therapies have failed? Ruben? Sure. So I think the, the JAK, JAK inhibition as a strategy in PV you know, is very logical based on what we know with the disease. And even the initial studies that focused on JAK inhibition and myelofibrosis, the reason that it didn't really start in PV was, again, you know, the agents hadn't been tested first in human studies. Let's start in the patients with the most advanced disease. But PVAR was always the most natural place for the utilization of JAK inhibition. Uh, the vast majority of patients with PV have the JAK2V617F mutation. They all have overactivation of the JAKSTAT pathway, and certainly that blockade of the JAKSAT pathway, you know, has an impact not only in terms of controlling the counts in a favorable way, control of erythrocytosis, control of thrombocytosis that are both uh, JAK2 dependent, but really also a very significant improvement in the uh, cytokines associated with the disease, improvement in symptoms, and reduction in splenomegaly, uh, as had been seen by the earlier, you know, myelofibrosis studies. So certainly now, you know, ruxolitinib has been approved as a JAK inhibitor uh, in PVR patients who have been resistant or intolerant to uh, hydroxyurea or really earlier cytoreductive therapy, whatever that is. Uh, in particular, helpful for improvement of controlling counts when they had failed the prior therapy, uh, improvement in those difficult symptoms, uh, including reduction in uh, splenomegaly. So it's been highly impactful. Mary Francis. Um Help us with how you actually manage patients with PV on ruxolitinib. So patients, uh, ruxolitinib is licensed second line in patients who are hydroxycarbamide resistant or intolerant. So it's a group of patients who have uh, had a failed response to that. The licensed dose in polycythemia vera is 10 milligrams twice a day. Um, and that's usually the dose you start with. Um, uh, the dose adjustments are not usually needed um, anemia and thrombocyte. Occasionally they may become anemic, which is a bit of a disaster if they started out uh, needing venous section, but I have actually seen that happening. Um, and, and, and thrombocytopenia is the other one you need to watch for and may have to adjust the dose. It's usually tolerated pretty well in this group of patients. Um, again, you're using a 10 milligram twice a day dose. Um, they do get some side effects um, and uh, the ones that I've been particularly aware of are the infections. The one thing I warn patients about now is they may well get um, herpes zoster, and I've seen people getting that a lot. It's a big problem if somebody's been perfectly okay and then they get herpes zoster, particularly if they get it re repeatedly, which can happen. Um, and they all also need to be very aware of watching their skin, which they really need to do, even on it's probably tied up with the hydroxycarbamide um, as well, um, but there is an increased incidence of s secondary skin malignancies. Again, maybe tied up with the hydroxycarbamide. Have you seen a benefit in terms of quality of life by uh, using? Absolutely, this? yes. Um, that's sort of coming further down. I think this this. We'll drug, get to it now. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this drug um, is particularly useful for a, a certain group of patients. The group of patients in my experience that do very well are those with a big symptom burden, particularly in my experience, the ones with terrible itch, which polycythemia vera patients have, the aquagenic itch, the people who tell you they haven't had a, a shower for years because they can't stand water on their skin. Ruxolitinib on these patients within days stops their symptoms and has a major impact on their quality of life. Night sweats, etc. Uh, as well will reduce splenomegaly, but then that's maybe a slightly different issue as to where they are with the, with their disease. I think there's a subgroup of people with polycythemia vera whom ruxolitinib is life-changing in terms of quality of life. 